Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Shrek Games Editor video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with NVIDIA, specifically a whole slew of GTX 20 series rumours. That's right, it would appear that we are not going to be seeing these cards called GTX 11 after all, and the real kicker is that they are not going to be known as Turing. In fact, it looks like Ampere is here to stay. So, if you want to know more details on that, well, let's begin. First of all, there is a PCB that has leaked out for the what we can presume to be the GTX 2080. Now, this was actually spotted by a user on Beidou. The PCB looks like it is 256-bit, therefore we are looking at either 8 or 16 gigabytes of RAM on this particular card. Furthermore, you will notice that the card seemed to have a 10-phase VRM powered through a 6 plus an 8-pin power connector. That's actually quite a bit. I mean, considering that the GTX 1080 requires just one 8-pin power connector, it's quite a step up in terms of power consumption. I am somewhat skeptical, though, that the 6-pin power connector is optional. I actually think that it may actually be required because this appears to be a reference PCB design by NVIDIA themselves. You'll also notice that the SLI finger at the top looks very different. This is pure speculation on my part, but it's possible that this is a variant of NVLink. NVLink is something that NVIDIA puts on their GPUs for the data center, and of course it does support numerous features over the traditional SLI variant. It's possible, therefore, that Ampere, such as the GTX 2080, one of the ways it's going to improve on Pascal and other predecessors in the GeForce lineup, is to better support multi-GPUs. Now, of course, multi-GPUs would also fall down to software as well. So I'm curious what changes NVIDIA are seeing there, as well as perhaps game developers, APIs, and what exactly we're going to be seeing in terms of support. But it is indeed very interesting. From what I can actually see on the certification logos, we can see that it looks like the design is about as final as it's going to get. You'll notice that the actual uh, chip itself, in terms of the pin layout, looks to be fairly small. It's nowhere near as big as what you would expect for, let's say, a Titan V-Class card. Therefore, it's most likely that we are looking at a GTX 2080. And this is actually further enforced by another series of rumours that are going around. And that is that Manly, or Manly, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it, to be honest with you, has actually registered various GTX 20 series SKUs. So Manly Technology Group do produce NVIDIA graphics cards, and we can actually see in a rather large wall of text in an EEC certification that GA104 graphics processor is actually specifically named, the GA104400. And once again, it is an A. So this you would assume means Ampere. After all, if it was GT, that would represent Turing. Of course, in reality, it could just be called, I don't know, Flower. It could be called Piece of Wood. It's only a code name. It doesn't necessarily mean much, perhaps outside of NVIDIA. On the other hand, it is possible that very early on in the chimp's life, there were two competing designs and NVIDIA were trying to figure out which one did which. So perhaps Ampere was just better for gaming. Or perhaps that's just not the case. Perhaps they were just trying to choose between the two names of the architectures and just eventually that one went. Or perhaps Turing was just, well, a red herring all along. Perhaps it really didn't mean anything. And the video really did just want to celebrate the birthday of Alan Turing. And of course, other rumours were starting to circulate and they thought they might as well, well, do a little bit of trolling. And also, we see a couple of specific NVIDIA GeForce GTX 20 SKUs. Specifically, we see the GeForce GTX 2070 and GeForce GTX 2080 graphics cards. <laughs> so this is kind of, well, a nail in the coffin. Unless there is a real rabbit pulled out of the hat at the last minute, it's almost certain at this point that GeForce GTX 20 series is here to stay. Frankly, I don't really have an attachment of one name to the other. In other words, with the 20 series, the 11 series, it could be called the, you know, the 52 series. It doesn't really matter. It is only a code name. What does matter, of course, crucially, is the performance of these cards. Just a quick reminder, there are so many different rumours concerning the uh, performance of these GPUs and honestly no one really knows outside of NVIDIA and possibly a few board partners themselves 
what the potential performance of these cards is going to be. My personal opinion on this though is that we are going to be looking at a GPU which is going to be considerably more advanced than Pascal. What does advanced mean? Well obviously GDDR6 are showing. We know the GD, uh, GDDR6 is much more likely than HPM2. It's almost certain we're never going to see HPM2, particularly for GTX 2080 class cards. Therefore, what other stuff? Well, most likely we're going to see support for the new virtual reality connectors. Um, there's possibly going to be in, uh, some type of tensor uh, technology as well in the GPU. After all, NVIDIA have already been patenting ray tracing for anti-aliasing. We discussed that a couple of days ago. And furthermore, they are really pushing RTX technology and really embracing DirectX 12 and ray tracing as a whole. So there is almost certainly going to be a whole plethora of different changes on the GPU. And I, for one, I'm going to be really excited to see what the actual cards are capable of. Are we going to finally see a GTX 2080 card that will be able to play 4K games at 60 FPS? Well, possibly a good portion of them, but I don't necessarily know if all of them my personal opinion is most likely the GTX 2080 is probably going to be putting out roughly the same levels of performance as the high-end cards now. So perhaps we'll see the GTX 2070 put out the same level as like the, the ties. That is obviously the 1080 ties and possibly the 2080 might be a little bit above that. But this is pure speculation on my part. Now we're going to move over to a good piece of news for Tesla, but a bad piece of news for NVIDIA. You're going to say, well, gee, what the heck do those two companies have in common? Well, NVIDIA have been supplying Tesla the chimps for autonomous vehicles. But in a bad piece of news for NVIDIA, Elon Musk has told investors that the company have been creating their own AI chip and it is almost ready to be put to market. In fact, the company have been working on this for three years and according to Mr. Musk, it's finally coming to fruition. So is it just a case of Tesla are saving money compared to licensing NVIDIA chips? After all, that makes sense, right? If you are not licensing the technology from someone else, if you're not buying it from someone else and you're producing it internally, it costs you less cash. Well, yes, that's one good thing, but it's also performance. Tesla's chip is a little faster than NVIDIA's. How much? Well, the chip that NVIDIA have been supplying uh, Tesla can handle 200 frames per second. Okay, well, that's pretty good. How much better is Tesla's chip? Are we looking at 250? 300 maybe? Maybe 220? I mean, maybe a slight improvement in performance. That can make a large difference, right? No. Uh, according to Elon Musk, it can do over 2,000 frames per second. So it is actually over 10 times faster because it's actually more than 2,000 frames per second. So once again, NVIDIA's chip is providing 200 frames per second and Elon Musk's chip, Tesla's chip, can do over 2,000 frames per second. According to Elon, it's an amazing design and we're going to be looking to increase the size of our chip team and investment in it as quickly as possible. All the connectors are compatible and you get an order of magnitude more processing and can run the camera at primary full resolution with a complex neural net. So it's just super kick ass. And according to Elon Musk, it doesn't actually cost them any more. Basically the pricing equivalent is just the same, but the key difference here is just the level of performance is so much more. Of course, you can expect Nvidia to be countering this pretty quickly. And the Nvidia's credit, they are putting a lot of cash into this. So you can imagine that perhaps their chip is going to be even faster in the future. Who knows what Nvidia actually have on the roadmap. Obviously though, it is good news for Tesla. I do wonder if they're going to do variants of this chip for other uses. And are they going to start to sell those chips to other companies? Are they going to start to license them out? We all know that Tesla have been somewhat strapped for cash at points. And this could be a very lucrative secondary stream for the company. I'll say secondary. They've got so many different streams of revenue potentially if they really wanted to. But it could certainly be an auxiliary stream of cash for the company. Which obviously would please investors. And would also be very, very, very good for the marketplace to actually put out an additional chip, which perhaps can do different things with uh, different calculations and different usage scenarios compared to their competitors. And of course, we'll start to drive performance in that market. Anyway, I think that's just about it for this video. But before I close out, I'd also like to uh, quickly 
I mentioned a competition that's going on at the moment. Uh, we're not hosting it, it's actually MSI, but because we are a, a review partner of the B450s, we're actually waiting for the chip at the moment, a 2600X, which is uh, flying in, so it should arrive the next day or two. Uh, we are actually going to be putting out a gaming uh, pro carbon review, the B450s. So if you want to check out the link in the video description, you can see a competition. It's only available for folks in the UK. But if you check out the link, then you can go ahead and actually purchase a uh, 450 motherboard, any of the 450 motherboards, and you will be entering in for a chance to win uh, two, one of two CPUs every week. And there are four weeks that this competition is going to run. So in short, you can actually be in for a pretty good chance to win a uh, win one of these processors. So, you know, we're not getting any kickback for it. It's not a sponsored video. There's no money being changed hands. It's just something that uh, MSI are running and they've kind of told us about it. And we said, sure, we might as well tell our viewers because obviously it's a bonus to you guys if you can get a processor. And obviously that CPU, that Ryzen CPU is yours. So even if you've just bought one, uh, at the time of your build and then you know you get told that you've won this particular processor you know sell it on ebay give it to your friends whatever you want to do with it it's totally yours to keep but anyway hopefully you've enjoyed the video i'll see you soon take care bye for now